A discovery that fundamentally changed the way we think about microbes was made while studying a peculiar marine bacterium called Vibrio fisheri. In the dark, colonies of Vibrio fisheri are bioluminescent. Although these bacteria can survive as planktonic forms in marine environments, Vibrio fisheri predominantly lives in symbiosis with certain marine animals, such as the Hawaiian bobtail squid, Euprimna scolopes. The bacteria colonize and receive nutrients inside the light organ, a structure located in the squid's mantle cavity. The bacteria glow only under certain conditions. The genes needed to make light are off when bacterial cell densities are low, such as in seawater, but turn on under crowded conditions, such as in the light organ of the squid, when enough cells are together to make a visual impact. How do cells know they've achieved an adequate number of nearby individuals, that is, a quorum, before turning on their luminescence genes? It turns out that this phenomenon, called quorum sensing, is only loosely associated with cell numbers. Induction of a quorum sensing gene system requires the accumulation of a molecule called an autoinducer. After a cell produces an autoinducer, the molecule rapidly diffuses out of the cell. The more cells in a given space, the faster the autoinducer builds up, and the more likely it will re enter cells and trigger the luminescence response. Under laboratory conditions, the artificial addition of the autoinducer to the appropriate concentration will even cause cells grown at low density to glow. The Lux system of genes mediates the bacterium's bioluminescence. In this system, Lux genes are initially expressed at a low basal level, leading to the production of a small number of Lux proteins, including Lux I and Lux R. Lux I synthesizes the autoinducer, which in the case of Vibrio fisheri, is a chemical called acyl homoserine lactone. The autoinducer quickly diffuses out of the cell, typically without a chance to interact further with the Lux system inside the cell. However, when the autoinducer is at a high concentration outside of the cell, as in crowded conditions, a number of these molecules are likely to re enter the cells and bind to the regulatory molecule, Lux R. The Lux R autoinducer complex binds to the operon and activates transcription, enhancing the expression of the target genes. Thus, more Lux I and more autoinducer are produced, which will ultimately further enhance the expression of this operon. The enzyme responsible for light production, luciferase, consists of the products of the Lux A and Lux B genes. Luciferase catalyzes a redox reaction that produces oxidized and reduced chemical products as well as blue green light. Because the Lux proteins, like other proteins, require energy to produce, the cells turn this system on only when appropriate, such as when they're crowded together in the light organ of the squid. How does light from Vibrio fisheri benefit the squid? The bacteria provide luminescence for the squid after sunset, when the animal emerges from its hiding place in the sand to search for food. As the squid swims in a moonlit night, its light organ projects light downward in an apparent attempt to camouflage the squid from any predators below. Looking up, a fish would see light matched to that of the night sky, instead of the dark silhouette of a squid. Vibrio fisheri is not alone in its use of quorum sensing. Although bacteria are typically thought of as unicellular, in nature, many, if not most, bacteria form specialized surface-attached communities called biofilms, such as the plaque found on teeth. In biofilms, bacteria communicate with others using a variety of chemicals. The bacteria use the chemical language to assess bacterial cell density and diversity and to determine the best time to perform a behavior, such as start to glow or launch a virulent attack within your body.